the, the next thing on the agenda is uh, Mr. Gay Park came to me and wanted to know, if just I guess a verbal yes or no, if the commission is willing to approve the 15000 for the Bluegrass Festival next year. You wanted to go ahead and line up some talent. Yes. <coughs> and um, one to nine. Well, I think we need to, uh, I think we you could probably refer him to the Parks and Recreation, and if he wants to file for a contribution, then he's willing to do that. Let's see how that would be any different than anything, you know, anybody else we need to deal with. Okay. So is there a motion we go ahead and send him a letter informing him of that? Yeah, I'm going to send a letter right. to Mr. Gabehart and inform him to contact the Parks and Recreation, and if he wants to apply for a contribution, then he can, he can do that. I'll second that. Is that all yes? Yes. The next on the agenda is Sheriff Park. Uh, I got three topics I can address to the county. But first, I want to Thank the county commissioners for working with the sheriff's department. Uh, we uh, we just had a meeting with our deputies up there, and uh, and we are we're uh, trying to stress teamwork, and uh, and I think that's the first step to prosper is if the county commissioners, sheriff's department can work together, and so far we are. But anyway, the three topics I want to mention is where are we at on the raise that I've asked for the deputies. And the reason why I'm asking is the state police is opening up the floodgates in January. If you're a certified police officer, you can go up there and if you pass their PT test, for 11 weeks you can become a state trooper. And we've got some young, very young deputies here in the county. I know that we've got a waiver that they signed that they can't leave for two years. I'm going to keep them more than two years. You know, rollovers is really is very, very expensive. And what I'm talking about, rollover is important. It's very, very, very expensive. And <clears throat> we lost one out of the academy just, just last week. Uh, it cost us, uh, I think it was $1,100 we got the bill on that one again. We're not going to get the benefit of anything from that, but I think if, uh, if if we can give these deputies something, these young deputies something to shoot for here in the county, Lincoln County, that we won't have to worry about the state police no matter what they offer to get in. But anyway, the second one is uh, that letter that one wrote. I've already spoke to the. Uh, Mr. Vance there, Commissioner. And I'm very satisfied with his answer, what he has given me on that. And I'm not going no further than that. Uh, again, he has, uh, he has given me a well satisfying answer on the two deputies to be hard. And uh, third topic I want to mention is uh, I have. Uh, replaced two employees in my department and uh, it's not that we're going to have to budget for it it's the where i've lost one deputy out of academy and we've had one to resign and we have uh, uh, re replaced him already I've already done the advertisement the procedures that we had to go through and we have done the interviewing and we have chose the two that we want to hire, and it's uh, it's in the hands of the county commission now. But anyway, that was what I want to speak about. And I thank you for allowing me to speak. Well, uh, just go ahead and tell you, I think that uh, for the October 17th meeting that we're going to have, I think we need to go ahead and put that on the pay up pay raise on the agenda for the sheriff's department. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and do that for the law enforcement. I know that you've asked for it, and, uh, and I've, I've talked to you, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of giving you a raise, and I told you that, um, that we need to do that. And um, so I just think that the 
Let's just go ahead and put that on the gym in October and let's do that. And make it effective for maybe December. December. Is that okay? That sounds good. And what what we're looking at, Sheriff, I think is to look at, I know you requested a 13% pay increase. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the numbers that, that I run through, and I think I may even mention this to you at before, but we're looking at going ahead and increasing the pay 10% for your deputies instead of 13%. Okay. Uh, so, you know, that's, I, in looking at the numbers, you know, uh, I think that allows us also to look at, like we talked about the other deputies and things like that later on, you know, we're looking at the budget and things of that nature. But uh, I think getting, you know, I don't know what percentage that is of what you asked for, but I know uh, somebody can figure that out, Steve can figure that out. But I mean, that's that's a significant uh, portion of what you asked for, and I think you deserve even more than that you guys do. But I think it, that at least gets us on the uh, near what other counties are paying and be able to, uh, you know, I think one of the advantages we have is a lot of these people that you're hiring, they, they like Hampton County, they like living here, they like the people. Right. So I think that's the kind of people we want in law enforcement, that's the kind of people we need to do the best we can to retain those people. So uh, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and put that on the agenda for the next time to go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and, and go with uh, 10 of the 13 percent increase. So uh, uh, that, I think, will help you guys out some, and then when we look at the budget in March, we can look at what else we can do for that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to share that. I also want to, you know, um, he was mentioned about the 10% pay raise. Um, you know, we're given $150 for insurance for our employees every month. Um, I wanted to talk with the commission to see if, you know, whenever this, the health care law comes into effect October 1st, and, you know, we have people that are going to be signing up on uh, for health insurance. We'll give them $150. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's going to be people that are eligible for subsidies to work in the courthouse. See if the county commission can cover the premium after the subsidies. We can cover any more of the premium for our employees so, we don't have, so they don't have to incur that cost of health insurance. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take whatever you give us. So, I mean, we, we're, we're not greedy. Well, I mean, I'm not just for you all, but I mean for all, all I mean, of the yeah, courthouse the I mean, uh, we're not great. We took uh, whatever you give us, like Doc May said, uh, Jack Cooper said, if it's 50%, fine. <laughs> 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 I would agree with it. But I know, I know the Lane County, is, we don't have the revenue that Boone County has and Campbell County has come in, but we don't have to be up there with Boone County. We don't have to be up there with the state police. But we do need to show our young people, our young deputies, that we are fighting for them. And they, and you know, if they see that, that would be enough incentive to want to stay in Lincoln County. And most of them that I've talked to, they, like, they love Lincoln County. They don't, Absolutely, sir. They want to stay. And if we just show them, say, hey, look, we love you all, too. And uh, we're going to do our best to help you. And I don't think we'd have any trouble in, in two years of have to get out here like uh, we have been doing in the past, trying to round up some uh, some uh, some deputies, some people that's qualified. And uh, you know, today it's a lot different than it was when I was deputy sheriff. You don't pull in a badge and a set of key uh, keys to a cruiser and a gun and say here you're a deputy. We have procedures we got to go through for civil service, and that's how we do it. And when we get ready hard, they'll send us down the list, right? Yes, sir. The hard. But, uh, and again, uh, I think if the young deputies will see that we are fighting for them and want to keep them and uh, establish a, a, a good sheriff department here in Lane County, I think that's the first step uh, for, for Lane County to move forward. I know if I was a multi-millionaire, I wouldn't want to move the business into Lane County. I mean, uh, they didn't have no uh, police protection or security, would you? That's all I need to know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank appreciate you, Doc. Appreciate, appreciate what you guys do. We really do. Next on the agenda is the Hearts Community Center. Uh, I want to thank you all. I'm Howard Farley. I think you pretty well know who I am. Marshall Community Center. Uh, we've got first thing on the agenda on, on our agenda for this is the bids for the roof. I hate that you put me after my brother there. He already asked for money, and then here I am stepping up here asking for money, too. I don't like that. She's been another. Uh, there are three bids there. If you look at them, one of them is told to 30000 
One of them was 72,000. If you add all three of the A1 roofing together, it's around 100,000. Uh, we have the one from the John Vance. His and is 33,000. The statewide roofing service. Uh, we are asking, we got a grant recently for 6000 We are asking to, if we can move forward with this, I think if we don't have a roof, we don't have anything as far as the community center. And it is bad. I got some pictures I would like to show you guys of what the roof really looks like. Uh, we got big garbage cans, 55 gallon garbage cans sitting all under the second floor and if you don't keep them bailed out, if you have a hard rain, it, it runs right on down into the first floor. Now, I, I went ahead and sent a letter to the county of Eldridge requesting funding for that also. Right. right. And, uh, well, uh, Ron Atkins through agriculture. He is putting these, he's putting forth some grants for us uh, also. And uh, we have got Rick here that's going to uh, help us with the grant writing. Hopefully, we can get more people on board as far as writing grants to do this. And what we are asking the county commission is to put this roof on, then let us, as our grants come in, let us fund it back to you guys. I think that's what Senator Kirkendall was that's talking about. That's what he was talking about up there. So you're looking at me. And at you see the water, you yeah, see the water on top? Right that's, we, uh, that's the worst one. That's the one that has to be replaced. It said pull on top of the school and everybody said tickets for $2. That's right. Raise some money. Well, I think, you know, like you said, without the roof, you don't have a facility. Yes. So it's going to have, and, you know, the, the more we wait on it, the longer we wait, the worse the damage is going to be. So, yes. Um, you know, I know you guys are going to encounter more expenses as we go along, but I think you and I talked earlier <coughs> that you prioritize those expenses. Yes. And, and this has to be a, the number one priority to get this roof fixed. So um, if they're... Uh, I, could I run? Through, could I run through some more things? Yeah, Nothing that we're wanting, but some things that we're doing to give you a, an idea. You guys get you caught up to speed where we're at with this thing. Uh, the card swipe on the front door that that the interest that the board of education had on there for security purposes. The card swipe and you go in the door. Well, what we would like to do with those is to take those and move those from from there and move them to our weight rooms on the back on that part of the annex on the back of the building. We made a, a men's weight room, which we just went and purchased. We got $10,000 worth of weights and that's going into the men's and women's. We'd like to move these back there and charge $10, start out with $10 a month, and you get a little tab and you swipe that. And in the computer, in the secretary's office, you can type that in. If you haven't paid your ten dollars, your card don't work anymore. It's not activated for that month. That's the way we can track who's going in now the weight rooms because we have a lot of people that goes in and destroys. Instead of appreciating what we have, you have to kind of keep some of the riffraff out from destroying what we have. And I think that's a good idea to move those cards. We have everything there to do it with. All we have to do is have a piece of cable to run them out there and just install them on those two doors. And we have everything there to do it for. Oh, and uh, we have moved all the, the weight rooms, both weight rooms are moved down. We have the beauty salon, it's moved down and set up, she's in business. Uh, Dwight Coburn, he's coming to our next board meeting, which will be the first. He's coming to, he's addressing us with, he's gonna furnish I think secretaries, senior citizens, like we had at Pearlsburg at one time, he's going to try to get us two, like we had before. 
Uh, plus, he's got some other good ideals that he's bringing along that we're going to discuss. Uh, <coughs> Ken, the sheriff, we're putting a satellite station for his one of his deputies, or who's up there. I'm sure he's talked over with his deputies. When you first go through the door, there's a little room there as access. He's wanting phone lines put in there so they could use a phone and internet service over into that where I think if they make an arrest in that area instead of transporting them to the courthouse then to the jail they can just be able to process it there and take them, take them on to the jail okay uh, we talked with, with the Board of Education about and Steve was just discussing that about the apartment over top of the annex building for the deputy to house the deputy. Okay, uh, we're waiting on the steps on the front has to be repaired. Steps on the back are in good shape. We are looking at getting donations from uh, uh, Trans Services up there in Fleming, the Ronnie Fleming's construction outfit. They came down and looked at it and going to give us an estimate on doing that so we can have the apartment for the deputy over top of the annex building. Uh, the food drive that we're having each month is a huge success. Uh, food pantry out of Huntington is coming up one time a month. They had, we had over 200 families showed up at our last one. Uh, I'm talking about 200 families. I'm, I'm talking 200, around 200 families, but some of them had eight per family. When you fill out the card, you put down how many members are in your family. So we had like 800, I mean 200 uh, families that came through with anywhere from two to, to eight people in a family. And that, that's a huge success right now. The karate man has moved down He's moved into the back. We moved him from the front because the annex building out there has three rooms. One weight room is the width of it for the men's. The women's we didn't feel like was right to put them on the back where the night if anyone is there they'd have to go around the building to get into the weight room for the women. We moved the karate man into the back room but there's a problem. We didn't anticipate when we had the locks fixed, we didn't anticipate on having anyone in there at that time. Well, we moved farther faster than we thought. He's already there and he has no access way to get into the, to his building because the lock owner is the exit owner. It's got a bar on it. We have to have, we need a lock put on there. We need the locksmith to come back and install us a lock 